Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at mono white, I guess we'll call it humans, and we're going to try and make it on a budget, meaning no more than 15 rares or mythic rares. So let's go take a look at what we can build this with and maybe take it out into the ladder. Okay, here we are with the deck. Um, as you can see, it's very low to the ground. Only one, twos, and threes in the casting cost. And it's almost 100% creatures. So let's go through it real quick. So first up, I'm running four copies of Lunark Veteran. Uh, two reasons behind this is one, it gives us some life gain to fight the red decks. And secondly, it allows us to have a creature that can come back from the graveyard in the form of Luminous Phantom. Next up, we have Recruitment Officer. And this is in here because it's a really good one drop. It's a 2-1 with an upside. That upside is the activated ability to pay some mana, look at the top three cards of your library, grab one, put it into your hand. If the card costs three or less, and would you look at that, all of our spells are three or less. So, very nice, very nice. We're going to go with the Recruitment Officer. Next up, we're running two copies of Ambitious Farmhand. Ambitious Farmhand is here to do two things. One, be a human. And two, um, get a card out of your library. And that card being a planes. Now, this is a strategy called deck thinning. It's not card draw. It's specific getting a land out of your deck so you don't draw that land later in the game. So that's why this card's in here over something else, like maybe two additional Cathar Commandos. I want this in here specifically to make my mid game just a little bit better. Next up, we have two Cathar Commandos. This is in here to provide either a flash blocker or to break my opponent's toys. So against white decks, this is going to be very handy at eliminating cards like Ossification or Leyline Binding or anything else that is pesky. So that's why this is in here. Uh, next up, we have four copies of Copper Coat Vanguard. It's going to be the thing that you're most likely going to be want to be playing on two or three. That's why it gets a full four of in here. And so what this does, one in a colorless, two, two, human soldier. Each other human you get, you control, gets plus one plus zero oh, and has ward one. So that buff to attack power and the ward cost are both really good things that you want for your deck. So this gets a four of include. Next up, we have a little bit of a surprise here. It's Flare of Faith. So for a colorless and a white, instant. Target creature gets plus two plus two until in a turn. If it's a human... Instead, it gets plus three, plus three, and gains indestructible until on a turn. So it's a really good combat trick or a way to save one of your creatures from removal. So, and the fact that um, every creature in here is a human, it's going to give it plus three, plus three, and indestructible. So that's why this is in here. Uh, next up, we have three copies of Intrepid Adversary. This is here to be a... 3-1 with lifelink, obviously, but also to give the rest of the team plus one plus one as well. So when this is played, you can pay an extra one colorless and one white as many times as you can to give this card plus one plus one counters. And then for every plus one plus one counter on this creature, your entire team gets plus one plus one plus one. So it's a really, really solid card for this strategy. Next up, we have four copies of Ossification. It's pretty much the best removal the white has access to. So one colorless, one white. You enchant a basic land you control, which is, you have plenty of them. And then you um, exile a creature or a planeswalker from your opponent and lock it down until this card leaves play. So hopefully your opponent's not going to have a way to kill this card. So you can just wipe something off the board and hopefully kill them before they get a chance to break their ossification. 
Next up, we have three copies of Resolute Reinforcements. This is here as another flash creature to create a pesky blocker or to fake out your opponent. Let's say your opponent sees that you have mana open, but they don't know what you're going to be playing. So if you hold mana open, they think like maybe you're going to play a combat trick or maybe you're going to play something like uh, the Wandering Emperor. Um, no, you're just going to pop two blockers into play or play this at the end of your turn and then swing in with it on the following turn. So um, I really like flash creatures in case you can't tell. So that's why this is in here. Uh, next up, we have three copies of Talia, Guardian of Thraben. So this is for one colorless, one white. You're seeing a lot of that here. A lot of one colorless, one white. It is a 2-1 first strike. Non-creature spells cost one... Good thing I caught this. Test, test, test. Sweet. <clears throat> so next we have Talia, Guardian of Thraben. This is for another one colorless, one white. I think you're seeing a pattern here with the colors. Uh, or the casting cost, I mean. So, it's a 2-1 first strike, and it makes all non-creature spells cost one more to cast. So, yes, you are damaging your ossification with this, and your flare of faith, but those are the only non-creature spells in the entire deck. This is more than likely going to be more of a thorn for your opponent than for you. So, Talia gets an include in here, because it's a really solid creature, First Strike is very underappreciated. People don't respect it like they should. Um, and yeah, it'll, it has a potential to lock down your opponent. So that's why that's in here. Uh, next up, and kind of on the same game plan. Why does this do this? Well, it's a good thing that I am listening to myself while this is doing its thing. Okay, we're still recording. <clears throat> All right, next up, and you'll notice it's still on the same game plan, is Anointed Peacekeeper. For two colors and a white, you get a 3-3 Vigilance. As Anointed Peacekeeper comes into the battlefield, look at an opponent's hand, then choose any card name. Spells your opponent's cast with a chosen name cost two more to cast. Then also, activated abilities of sources with the chosen name cost two more to activate unless they're mana abilities. So, this is just Talia plus one. You get to target a very specific thing in your opponent's hand and also look at your opponent's hand so you get scouting information and then lock it down for a couple extra turns. So a Talia into an anointed peacekeeper can be absolutely backbreaking against the right deck. So that gets a two of. Uh, next up, we have Brutal Cathar. For two colors and a white, you get a 2-2 two -two human soldier werewolf. When this creature enters the battlefield or transforms into Brutal Cathar, exile target creature and opponent controls until this creature leaves the battlefield. And then when at nighttime, he flips over into a 3-3 first strike, ward pay 3 life. Pretty solid. And when it flips back to daytime from Moonrage Brute, it will capture another creature from your opponent. So if your opponent doesn't kill this, and allows day-night to trigger over and over, this can be very, very valuable for you. So that's why that's in here. And topping the list is Adeline Resplendent Cathar. One Carlos, two white. Legendary creature, human knight. It is a star four. Vigilance. Adeline Resplendent Cathar's power is equal to the number of creatures you control. Whenever you attack, eat for each opponent... Create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token that's tapped and attacking that player or a planeswalker they control. 
So this is the top of the food chain in this deck. You want to be playing this um, probably turn three, four, or five if the game goes on that long, um, just to get that extra attack in, have a nice big star four blocker on the on the backswing. Hopefully there won't be a backswing, but this is a very, very solid card for this deck strategy. So that's the last of that. Um, next is the mana base. We're only running 22 lands in this deck because three is the top of this deck, period. So we're running 20 planes and two Igonjo. That's it. So very easy, very budget. Let's count up the rares in this deck. So let's see here. That's common. That's uncommon. Common. There we go. So Intrepid Adversary is our first rare at three copies. Then we have Talia is another three copies. So that's six. Anointed is another two. So that's eight. Then Brutal Cathar is 9, 10, 11. Adelaine, 12, 13. And then the Igonjo is numbers 14 and 15. So 15 total rares in this deck. So it's very budget, very slim, very straightforward. So let's go win some games with it. Okay, so we have three lands. A one drop, three drop, three drop, and an ossification on two. Looks decent. We'll keep it. Oh, okay. Let's play a Lunark. Cut down. So that cut downing a long time ago. All right, well, let's go here and we'll play the backside. I'm fine with that. I'm more than happy to see you use two cards against my one. All right, let's play the Gonjo. I'll play Lunark Veteran. All right. And we will end turn, so you will likely try to counterspell. All right. Uh, let's play an Anointed Peacekeeper and draw that counterspell out of his hand. There we go. That's a good boy. All right, attack for one. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and play another Lunark. Next, I'll attack and turn. Shelly's here. Okay. I'm fine with that. Uh, do we play the Cathar? I think we play the Ossification. Mm -hmm. Swing in. Yeah, because he's playing more than enough creature kill to handle a Cathar if I drop it. It's still nothing. All right, let's play another Anointed Peacekeeper. There we go. Play into my trap. He's going to need to draw some cards pretty soon. He's reacting to me way too fast. Sure. All right, let's go ahead and play Atalia into a Lunark. Okay, he takes the two that he would have taken from an attack. Got one card left in his hand. Does he play it? Or does he say go? Oh, he played it. No three cards? Okay. We are milling. All right. We have three mana to play with. 
So let's go ahead and play Adeline. Pink, pink. All right, it's down to one. He'll probably use the plus three to uh, hit Adeline. Or plus one to give minus three, I mean. Not Hidatsugu. All right, that's fine. He's got one card left in his hand. I wonder if it's a counter spell. It is not. Sacrifice a non-token creature. I guess it'll be that. Okay. We finally have a land. So let's go here. Okay. We'll play a recruitment officer too. Pink, pink, pink. Invasion of Amon Cat, huh? All right, that's fine. Want me to discard a card? I'll discard Intrepid Adversary. Cathar Commando, very nice. All right, Copper Coat. All right, and we just come in. I think we win. Yup. Nice. Good job, team. Okay. Three planes, two recruitment officers, a Talia, and a Flare of Faith. We'll keep it. Cool. And we get to go first, too. Nice. I'm playing against red white for a change. Alright. Let's play Italia. Last zone. Interesting. All right. Let's go here. We'll go here. Next. Attack for four. What are they going to do next? All right. It's still Boros. But what are you going to do, though? Alright, my turn. We got the Flare of Faith. So we're kind of just waiting for them to try and remove one of our guys. That's exactly what we were looking forward to. Oh, and tapped land. That sucks. Do you have any way to get out of this? I guess not. <laughs> yeah, that's game. Flare of Faith for the win. That's three ossification. I'm tempted. You know what, with the, uh, my luck, I'm probably playing against a hard to control deck. Oh, nope, we're playing against red again. Alright, well, I'm glad I kept this hand then. Just gobble up all their creatures. There's another. And a Kamano. Let's see what you have. Furnace Punisher. Yeah, we'll see the Furnace Punisher. Unless that card he just drew is Lightning Strike. Hmm. 
Were you trying to bluff me? Oh, that's what he was trying to do. Okay. All right, Punisher comes in. It's going to be completely useless against me, though. Swing. Ah, uh, Phoenix check. All right, Cart, your hand is empty. Locks. All right, gobble up all those dudes and no attacks because that's going to become a creature this turn. It's just Foundry. You want to come at me? All right, you're up. Ah, uh, bloodthirsty. That's not good. Does he have any? No. No, he doesn't. He's just going to get the plus one on it. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. Wow. All right, animate. Mm -hmm. Ow. Oh, I like that. This becomes an artifact creature. Yeah, it does. Next, end turn. So? Resolve. All right, perfect. Where are you going to go with those? Both of them go in there. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's play this. Go to blocks. Block here. One blocker. Activate. Destroy that one. Nullify the entire turn. Activate ability. Yeah, we're going to go with the Intrepid Adversary. Blast with some direct damage. Yep, that'll do it. Target creature, planeswalker, or battle. Pretty decent. Decent in the fact that it can target battles. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're going to target me with play fire? Alright, my turn. It's a Kukumo. It's a Kumano. Kumano Paisano. Yeah, it deals two. Alright, we're going to two. Probably should have attacked with the Emissious Foundry, too. Well, no, because I would have blocked it, definitely. Alright. 
activate. Here we go, it's on the top. You know, Caprica Vanguard, Intrepid Adversary. Yeah, let's go with the Caprica. Attack with those. So you're thinking about maybe activating this foundry? Yeah. He's trying to block with it. Mm hmm Alright, I gain six. Go to eight. Alright, let's see what he drew. He drew a Felden. I kind of have to block. Alright. Let's see if he gets a damage spell. Wow. No damage spell. Nice. Bravo. Bravo, good sir. Alright, so here we are for the post-game wrap. And my thoughts are pretty much this. It works. It's a, it's a decent... Uh, aggressive list it caps out at only three mana so you're never really mana screwed um the mvps um i would have to say flare of faith is an absolute mvp of this deck um the cathar commandos really came in clutch for a few games um and lunark veteran uh, so pleasantly surprised me yeah, just the fact that it gains, like, passive life for you over the course of the game while you're playing out your dudes. And on the backside, it becomes a 1-1 flyer that gives you life when creatures die. It kind of keeps you in the game long enough against those other aggressive strategies. So, yeah, pretty solid. Um, the Intrepid Adversary tended, tended to be an almost dead card because I never really have more than four mana at any given time um but if you are in a situation where you actually have the mana to spend then it's an absolute game changer i mean it's really really solid card um if i were to change anything in this deck i would probably ramp up the one drops from eight to maybe ten maybe add a couple copies of a scroll in here um other than that yeah i'd probably yeah, I'd probably drop down on the Ambitious Farmhand, go up on two Skrelv, or if you want to keep it budget, go up by two Cathar Commandos. Those Commandos um, really pay dividends in some games. Um, other than that, yeah, the four Ossification, the three Brutal Cathar feels good. The Anointed Peacekeeper and Talia combo feels good. Adeline's a great game ender. Yeah, honestly, this is just a deck that works out of the box. Now, there are some numbers that you can tweak. Um, I do really like Flare of Faith for the indestructible clause on humans. Yeah, it's solid. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put a, a link to the deck list down below in the comment section. So you can go, or not the comment section, but the description box. So you can uh, take this out for a spin if you want to. It's a, it's a pretty fun deck. As far as aggressive decks go, it is really fun. So if you're looking for an alternative to Mono Red, you can do worse than this list. So that's it for today. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time.